Hi there guys and welcome to today's live stream. We're going to be talking about pronation of the feet and how that can relate to back pain. We'll talk a little bit about the mechanical chains, uh, chains of reaction that are taking place when we have this happening in our feet and how it can impact your back pain or stop it getting better. Some of the tensions that come up as it's going through, as the, uh, the force is going up through the limb into the lower back. So hopefully you guys are going to find this really, really helpful. We've got some interesting pictures as well for you guys today. And if you're new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing. Uh, hit the notification bell. We go live every single weekday. At the end, as always, we're going to be doing Q&A. So if you've got any questions, Lara's the other side of the camera. She'll be able to write those down and we'll go to those at the end of the video. But with that being said, let's get into today's live stream. Okay guys, uh, we've got sort of the general agenda on the side here, on the side of the screen. Um, I'm kind of going to go through, starting at the top, with what pronation is. Uh, we've got an interesting little picture for you guys. Uh, I know it is, but it's not too early now, we're running a little bit late uh, today, but an interesting picture for you guys. I'll try and make it brief, uh, so you don't have to stare at my feet for too long. Uh, we're going to talk about the consequences coming up from the uh, the feet into the lower back. What is actually happening? Because this is a really important concept. And 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 I'm then going to go over sort of the risky times. And by that, I mean uh, the environment that we're in at present and things that can influence this pronation and maybe make it a little bit worse. And then finally, how's, how, what can we do to really help this? And how can it really relate into your lower back pain as well? So if we start off with... Um, what is actually going on? I'm going to put this little picture up here. Took this this morning, uh, and I would actually encourage you guys to do this as well. Actually draw those lines going straight down your leg. Now, this was a video, but we were having a bit of a technical issue. It was kind of overloading the computer, playing both me and, and the video here at the same time. So we've just taken a, sc taken a screenshot. What you'll see on the one foot uh, over here is that you've got um, the line going straight down front of the shin into the foot towards the second toe. And that's where our weight distribution should ordinarily go. Now on the other foot with all the arrows and things, you can see what happens when we when our foot rolls in and what this is doing. Now we've got the in the, the, the inside of the foot, the arch where the arch should be that that's flattening out, it's putting tension through things like the plantar fascia, which can give you plantar fasciitis and other foot issues. But we've also got the big toe going away from the midline, as you can see with that little arrow on my big toe there. And that one is really, it's driving it out uh, out of the midline. And that's going to relate to things like bunions as well, which is just not helpful, not pleasant. And obviously shoe styles, um, high heels and, and pointy toed shoes are going to contribute to that as well. We won't get too much into that unless you guys have questions. Um, we'll go through that at the end. But then also you can see up on the shin there, you've got this rotation round. And it's that rotation that really is going to have impacts higher up. So this is what's what's really uh, going on in the foot. Now, we can come back to that later if you guys have any questions, but I think I'll remove my feet off the live stream for now. They've had more than enough attention. I'm gonna go over to the whiteboard here, and I wanna talk a bit, a bit about what's happening and how is this uh, going to create a, a few issues. Now, one of the worst things for someone with back pain is to have a foot problem or a knee problem at the same time, because it means that they have to change their weight distribution. They're putting more weight through one foot than the other, etc. And this pronation that can occur at the feet, the dropped arches, the rolling in of the foot can really lead to a lot of discomfort for an individual. Maybe it's secondary. It's, it's back pain as a result of the foot issue. And the pronation is just not helpful. So at the ankle, we've got this rolling in. And that rolling in, as you saw in the image of me earlier, that's going to be providing stretch through the plantar fascia, which can lead to discomfort there. But as the ankle rolls in, your lower leg down here has to twist as well and move in as well. So what we get then at the knee is we get altered tension going through that knee. You have to remember your knees are really two sticks on top of one another. The main thing that's providing them with support is muscular support. So we've got a number of, of you guys that, that, that are watching this that are in the back in shape. And some people um, have, have issues with their knees, etc. Well, the, the arches and the pronation in the foot can really contribute to making those knees worse because they are just two bones on top of one another. And as that arch ro rolls in, as we lose and get that pronation of the foot, this happens. And now all of a sudden, on the outside of the knee, we have more compression. And on the inside of the knee, we have more stretch. So you can start getting pain around this area of the knee and compression at this area. So we can get pain in both areas, but they're different kinds of injury. 
And this is a really important thing because the functioning of your knee and the meniscus that's in here is designed to load bear more through the inside of the knee. We should be stacked on top like that. And when the ankle rolls in, like you saw in the example um, of my feet earlier, that happens. And, and we go in this way, compressing this side and stretching this side. So the fundamental makeup of that knee where we've got stability on the inside, a larger medial condyle, a larger medial meniscus, that's the side closest to the midline, that stability has been lost. And, and instead of going through there, it goes through the outside. And this can also create issues with the patella, which is the kneecap. And it can result in trying to pull it round to the side, which is something that's a little bit more common in ladies, whereby you get patella, patella mouth, mouth tracking. There's a number of issues that, 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 that contribute to this. But essentially, if the mechanics of our knee is like so, the patella is going to be pulled round to the side a little bit more on on the uh, on, on the on the sort of the contraction of the quads etc now as we're working up the limb we're starting to get into the back now and one of you guys uh, many of you guys will know if you've got back pain right now that sleeping one of the comfortable positions sleeping is by providing a pillow between the knees to open the legs a little bit and what that does the reason that feels good in many cases is because it takes the glutes off tension the glutes are now relaxed a little bit more, so they're not pulling on the lower back. Well, the exact opposite thing happens when we have a dropped arch, because what we get here is, is this rotating in of the legs. And as we rotate in and round, we're going to put more tension through the glutes here, which arguably is going to pull on your lower back. Now, I'm, I'm jumping a little bit head up to the glutes there, but we're getting this rotation round of the upper leg, the femur. And that is really playing with the, the, the muscle tension that's coming up your legs. If it's dropped on, and, and it frequently is dropped on more on one side than the other, we now have asymmetrical muscle tension coming up from the feet into the, into the, into the knees and then on into the hips and the lower back. So these feet, although they're so far away really from your lower back, they can start to have consequences in that lower back. And then of course, we've got now the tension through the glutes, which is gonna pull on the lower back. And that creates its own issues. Now, what we also commonly get with those rolling in of the ankles, the rolling in of the legs, and then the, the tension of the glutes is that we get a bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. It shifts forwards a little bit, or it creates the, it creates the direction it wants to go forwards, which can create a little bit of tension down here at the bottom of the lumbosacral spine, especially if we've got any underlying issues there. Dropping the feet and having this little pulling in one direction can really create a few issues and a bit of tension in that lower back and be a driving factor in terms of uh, a barrier to recovery, so to speak. So the arches can really have an impact coming up from the, lower, from, from the ground uh, up into the lower back. Now, I mentioned on the, on the, on the, sort of the pre-face pre slide about risky times. And the reason these times are a little bit more risky uh, is that a lot of people in lockdown don't tend to wear shoes inside the house. And there are faults with shoes, uh, with certain types of shoes, but generally speaking, good shoes will provide a little bit of support of the arch. And therefore, more people may be wandering around the house in slippers or just socks. And therefore, those arches are allowed to drop a little bit more if we're not conscious of them. So some of you guys may have been around the house for a long time, stuck down. Some of you may be still going to be stuck indoors more than usual for a longer period of time. And therefore, the lack of this arch support is going to provide uh, further risk factor for the arches to degrade and then you've just I've just been through the sort of the uh, chain of reactions that can take place in the lower limb as it comes up into the lower back so we want to be mindful of that and the next thing is phase two and phase three and this is a good or risky point and a good point as well because we're starting to get into well what are you going to do how are we going to help this issue with the pronation in the foot now um the reason I mentioned phase one and phase two and phase three of the back in shape protocols is because we're starting to do some lower limb exercises. We're starting to do things like the squats or the lunges. And there, is, there are two schools of thought really here when it comes to the feet issues. There's certain people which talk a lot about um, the bare, barefoot shoes. I've got, as much as Lara would dis <laughs> dislike me showing you guys, I've got a pair of these, which are the Vibrams. They're, there's no support whatsoever. They're designed for you to uh, run in those or walk in those. Running is very, very different running in those. It, it's a real uh, challenge. And if you do it badly, you're gonna really, really, really hurt yourself in a number of areas. 
But there's that school of thought where we don't have any support for the feet whatsoever. We use our own muscles. And I must say, I really do like this, this train of thought because we're designed to support our own feet. That being said, we're not designed to necessarily walk on concrete all day, which means that our arches more readily drop in. If you go, say, for example, if, if you live near the coast and you go on the beach bare feet, you know, so when you stand on the ground, the, the ground naturally supports that arch, which is why a lot of the proponents of uh, using uh, using barefoot technologies and barefoot shoes really say, look, we, our bodies are designed to walk on softer surfaces and we're designed to maintain our own arches. So there is that. And running, for example, or walking even in those, it, if you do it correctly, it does give you a, a, a very peculiar but really nice sense of spring. Now, um, the other option is wear really supported trainers, trainers that support the arch, that don't allow much foot movement and that really hold your, your foot. And here they come again. Uh, let's just cut them back in. In that position that you can see on the one side, we've got a nice gap in the arch. The line coming down the shin into the foot is really straight. Um, in that position, we've, we've really supported the foot and the trainer works around that position to hold it in place. Maybe you've got some orthotics. So we have those two options for us. But when we're talking about moving into the phase two and phase three, doing some of these exercises, it really comes from up in the glutes in terms of holding these positions because by engaging your glutes when you're standing in front of the mirror, and I'd really encourage you guys to do this next time you're doing your phase two squats or something like that, you stand in front of the mirror with bare feet and really just watch yourself, watch your feet, get them into that position. If you want to get out the marker one of these and draw on your leg like I've done, just you know go back and, and bring that picture up, draw down the leg, down to the second toe and make sure it's a straight line and then really just play around with your feet to feel what it feels like to get that line straight and then let it roll in again and then hold it straight and go through your squats. And what you'll find when you're doing that is that you're, hold, you're, you're engaging your glutes in a kind of a different way to hold things stable as you go through that movement to make sure that our weight distribution through the feet is correct. And doing that will allow you to start to learn to protect your feet from, from rolling in but it'll also be really helpful for your lower back. You're learning to start to engage all of those muscles down the leg in the correct symmetrical fashion as we're doing these phase two exercises like the squats or the phase three stuff like the lunges with the bands. So it, there are risks as you get into those exercises that if you've got a foot problem and your feet roll in, or you don't have a foot problem, but your feet roll in, you just weren't aware of it, that you could maybe do some of those exercises wrong. And, and as a little disclaimer, one of the most, uh, the most common mistakes that people make when they're doing the squats for example is that foot rolling in and the knees coming into the middle and part of that you may not even be because of the of the knee itself it may be because of the foot so if we have a work harder to hold this knee stable hold that foot stable by using the muscles up here then we're gonna we're gonna have a good time if we're not aware of these things and our feet are constantly rolling in we've got this constant stress on the glutes up here and that and it'll create your lower back and create issues in the lower back or stop, stop those issues resolving. And you might notice this when you go for a longer walk. Maybe it's when you're walking, you start to feel, oh, my glutes, my hips, they start getting really tight. Well, what about those arches? Let's have a look at those arches, see if they're contributing to the problem as well. So uh, that's pretty much it for today's live stream. We'll get into some questions. If you guys have any questions, I'll just recap it once more for you guys. We've got the picture of my feet, first of all, again. This will be the last time I show you guys it unless anyone has any questions, okay? So I'll spare you any more. Uh, we've got the good line going straight down the legs. We've got the line on the side, on the other foot here where we've got the dropped arch, the pronation of the foot rolling in. We can see that rotation through the, the lower leg. We can see that moving of the inside of the foot, the arch of the foot in towards the middle, the toe moving out, and that's an issue. And that's what happens when we're, when we're dropping the, these arches and, and, and the foot is pronating. We've got the consequences coming up the chain, a rotation of the lower leg, a gapping of the inside of the knee, like so, putting in, inappropriate pressure through the knee, tension on the glutes, and then a slight drive to rotate the pelvis forwards and stick the bum out. And that is really the forces that are going through your lower limb into your lower back and how they play in. We've got risky times at the moment where we run the risk of being walking around the house in bare feet a little bit more than we ordinarily would. So these might drop in a little bit more. And then we've got the challenges when we start moving into some of the load bearing exercise to make sure that we're controlling those feet to make sure that they're in a good position by engaging the legs properly and the glutes and the hip muscles to make sure that they provide good stability for the lower back to work on. And that is pretty much it. We go to Q&A. Awesome. Okay, great. Uh, morning, everybody. I just uh, changed the mic. Yeah. 
Carry on. Okay, so um, Ollie's got a question here. Uh, he says, will heel raises be good to improve uh, pronation? Um, with heel raises, I think you need to use them in conjunction with, um, with actual orthotics. So uh, we do use orthotics sometimes in the clinic. We do a lot of uh, extra imaging, as you guys know, from, from the front, we're also looking at leg lengths. If we have a substantial leg length difference, we'll use heel raises, but we don't tend to get involved in leg length discrepancies unless we've properly image them standing up um, there's all too often patients will come in and they'll say oh, well someone measured my legs and they pulled them and then they did something and then they got went even again if you have a leg length issue no matter no amount of pulling your legs or twisting your pelvis or doing any sort of thing is going to change anything because it, you can't change the bone is the bone no one's changing that um, and they're they're kind of I think sometimes it's easier when you see sort of it's commonly like a chiropractic or an osteopathic thing that people will do. I mean, physios might do it as well. They're looking at this bit, bit here and, and how the pelvis is rotated to influence the leg lengths. But if, 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 if the legs weren't equal and then they rotated the pelvis and now the legs are equal, up here must be now unequal. So we have to bear in mind the consequences. It sounds quite kind of, oh, my legs were longer and, and now they're shorter or the same length. But um, anyone kind of changing the leg lengths like that isn't really doing what they say they're doing. I think they're just trying to use the, the easiest way for you to conceptualize what's happening. So uh, don't use heel raises unless you've got it validated, in my opinion, on a, on a set of x-rays that we know the bony length of those legs and limbs are um, accurately in, uh, you know, imbalanced. Okay, awesome. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, insoles that you can buy over the counter, but Karen's yeah. got another question here, which maybe goes uh, alongside that. Do you think it's possible to reset the arches? You can also get uh, correct toes um, that try to put your feet back into the correct alignment. Do you think that would be helpful to wear during the day? I think when you see a, an image of uh, the, the feet, uh, there's so many muscles, so many moving bones, so many bits and pieces, so many ligaments in there. You know, we have a lot of structures of, of, semi, of, of small structures inside the foot. I think, although we do recommend arches, it, it's mostly in the case of someone with a leg length issue, and you can't do anything any other way, and it's a significant leg length issue. We don't tend to gravitate towards arches. I mean, I've just shown you guys me using the uh, the, the, the vibrams, which actually separate your toes anyway. It feels really nice. Um, but anyway, that's by the by. Um, <laughs> uh, but in, on the topic of using outside sources to try and correct the feet, it, it, the passive process of correcting them is really difficult. You, you need to you need to have an active process. It needs to be a process that you're participating in rather than just allowing to happen to your body because it's it's the muscles and the musculature and the active use of those feet that really do maintain that arch. And when we the, a lot of the reason people lose it is because their feet are locked into one position for extended periods during the day while they're wearing poorly. Uh, poorly designed shoes and I don't mean poorly designed generally the, the shoes are lovely designed they look nice and whatever else but the nicer the shoe looks the probably the worse it is for your foot especially when it comes to lady shoes yeah <laughs> um, there are there are some uh, stores where you can actually go and get your foot measured and get a get it molded and, and you get, get a shoe or an insole Created specifically for you, I think there's one on Marlebone. Yeah, yeah, you can. You, there's there's one in Marlebone, uh, a, a nice shop that does that does sort of custom arch supports yeah. and everything. But again, I go back to the to the point of there's those two different schools of thought, and there's the you know the podiatrists that are going to try and go through with um, using arch supports, and then there's also going to be the podiatrists that will go through using rehab. And unfortunately, like anything, it's a lot easier to get an arch support and just wear that. Although the amount of times when I have patients coming in and they say, I've got some arch support. Oh, where are they? And they go, oh, they're in the kitchen cabinet. I go, they don't work in the kitchen cabinet. They only work in your shoes. So, you know, it, it's, it's in my opinion, it's a little bit of a more lazy approach to just try and use an arch support to solve all your problems. There does need to be an element of active engagement in that process of rehabbing, like anything, you know, like you guys that are in the back in shape, uh, premium and, and basic membership, you've got to do those exercises. And it's the same thing with your feet. If your feet are rolling in, if we've got that drop in on the inside, we have to actively do something and participate. Now, there will be some issues where people have anatomy changes. Maybe we've got some surgical uh, history. We've damaged the ankle ligaments through trauma, all those sorts of things. But for the overwhelming majority that don't have those things, we need an active process in trying to deal with with those foot issues, uh, rather than just trying to rely on some off-the-shelf uh, orthotics, definitely. And if you if you go down the route of using the more custom-built arch arch supports uh, with a sort of a specialist bespoke approach, then that there are advantages. But I would suggest that those podiatrists would probably still tell you to do some exercises. Okay. Uh, so Joe has asked. So should we exercise with bare feet to help pronation? Uh, can the arches improve uh, with the back and shape exercises? 
I think if you are mindfully doing those squats and those lunges um, with your feet in mind, maybe with a mirror in front of you so you can see exactly what you're doing, then I think, yes, you can make improvements there because you'll, you'll actually find, like I mentioned earlier, um, you're going to find that your glutes are going to have to engage a little bit more. Your feet are going to have to engage a little bit more. You just become a little bit more conscious about these things. And much like anything, whether it's a golf swing, a tennis swing, whether it's, you know, uh, playing an instrument, the more you do it correctly, the more it gets better. Equally, the more you do your squats with bad form, the, the, the more it's going to make you worse. So we have to make sure that our form and our technique is, 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 is vital. Um, it, it's got to be correct when we're doing these. And with time, if we are continually doing the right sort of technique, from a point of view of the feet then we have to be doing it correct for everything else by definition and we should find that those arches do improve a little bit as well okay awesome got a question here from kate um is, is this is this why my right knee uh, uh is this possible why my right knee in particular turns in when i stand i notice when i drive etc as it always turns in i've been told it's because of a hip problem that that affects it so unstable um or is it control um so i think with with regards to what what you're describing there kate it's it's highly likely i definitely do that exercise uh, in front of the mirror uh mm. do, do that drawing on your feet because you might find that your feet are rolling in and it doesn't matter what's happening up top yes if your core's not right and your glutes aren't working properly and the hip muscles aren't working properly to stabilize the leg from the top down you're likely to have issues but at the same time it, there may be a component of the feet as well these things are so interrelated it's worth actually just having a look at yourself in the mirror as you could just going through even like a shallow squat you don't have to go down far you just kind of just like that even that and you'll see what's happening to my feet when i do that even from the starting position is my one foot kind of rolling in already um and if you're getting knee issues especially on on you know on that particular side i would look at the feet as well just to consider you know is there anything else going on there Okay, awesome. Um, I think that's I think that's everything for today. Awesome. Uh, well, I hope you guys found today's live stream helpful. It's a bit of a different one, looking at the feet right on the way uh, from the foot down up to the back rather than focusing more in on the back so hopefully you guys did find it helpful if you're coming to the live stream late you're watching it after the fact then please still do still post your comments in the section below we'll do our best to answer those as best we can and again if you're new to the channel if you found this video helpful and you want to subscribe to the channel please do consider doing that hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss when we go live if we every weekday uh that's monday to friday we go live with the q a at the end as well so until then have a great day. Yeah. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.